am so excited to have everyone join us for Pop for Power of the Purse. And your presence here today is amazing, especially when it's raining outside. Perhaps having a virtual session is the best way to go for, for today's event. And thank you all for joining because we have an amazing influencer with us today. Cora Hall is, I've had such a joy getting to know her. Cora Hall is the Assistant Vice President of Group Benefits Marketing for the Hartford. In this role, she leads marketing strategy for employer and affinity partnership marketing. In 2018, she led the external go-to-market strategy for the Hartford's $1.45 billion acquisition of Aetna, Aetna Group's life and disability, and disability businesses, designing the new marketing operating model for the combined organization. Cora is an amazing talent, and as a United Way, I'm just excited to have her here. My name is Jesse Mejia, and I'm one of the directors at, the, at, at United Way. And again, for all those of you that just joined us, thank you for being here. But we're going to get going. And Cora, thank you so much for being our influencer. I'm going to share my screen, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really honored um, and flattered to be here and to talk about the business case that we made at the Hartford to Alice. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, Alice stands for Asset Limited, Income Constrained, and Employed. So if we go to the next slide. So as I, as I thought about my work in marketing and the amazing team that I get to be part of at the Hartford, I wanted to make sure we created a session that, you know, one, shared our business case. So uh, I'll share that over the next eight to 10 minutes. But what were the lessons that we learned along the way? And how can we bring that back to all of you so that we can collaborate together and we can advance more ideas, whether it's in the philanthropic space or it's an idea that you have for your company. And I think there are some principles that apply whether you're in a small business or you're in a large corporation like the Hartford. So as I talk to my team, uh, we really believe that the best ideas come from within and we try to create a culture where people feel comfortable sharing those ideas. Uh, and, and we learn a lot as we go. And I think that as we collaborated on this particular project, there were three main pillars and you'll hear more about them. First and foremost, how do you work cross-functionally? How do you get out of your silos internally and externally to learn more from others? And how can you apply that to make meaningful change? And I think you'll see in this example that that, that was a key piece to our success. The second part of it is understanding what, what um, research is available. And as part of this project, I was able to go to New Jersey, which is the birthplace of the Alice research, and really learn from others uh, why they were so committed to helping people that are living paycheck to paycheck. And then ultimately, how do you craft the pitch and how do you go to your senior leadership, in our case, within group benefits as well as at the enterprise level, uh, to be able to get that senior level commitment. So with that, I hope uh, I can share our case and then give us a good 15 to 20 minutes where we can talk together so we all can help each other. Next slide. So fundamentally, the relationship with the Hartford and the United Way has spanned several decades. So the Hartford is incredibly committed to creating safe, strong, and successful communities. And we do this through our investments in philanthropic initiatives that positively impact our most vulnerable neighbors. And so as we learned about the ALICE research and who it helps and how it helps that population, we saw a lot of connections, both with our enterprise philanthropic program, as well as our group, benef group benefits business, which is where I work, uh, where we provide life and disability insurance on behalf of employers to their employees. And so as we got deeper, we also learned more about 211, which is a national hotline that helps people like Alice in real time within their communities. And that's where the partnership began as we saw alignment with the Alice mission and ours. And I think too that the ideas grew really from a small group here in Hartford with Paula from the United Way, Annie from the 211 Center in Rocky Hill and, and folks within the walls of the Hartford. 
And we're really just committed to innovation and, and thinking about how can we positively impact our communities. Next slide. So about a year ago, uh, as we started to learn about Alice, uh, we were also really thinking about our 20 million group benefits customers, as we always do at the Hartford. And how can we broaden that commitment that we made uh, to be compassionate and always look for ways to ideate to go above and beyond in the claims experience? If, if you want to be inspired, a good way to do it is to go spend time in our call center. Uh, we have an amazing facility right here in Connecticut in Windsor. And as a leader of a team, I frequently ask my new hires to go spend some time there. And on any given day, one of our 20 million customers could call and it could be the best day of their life or the worst. So the best days look like someone who's taking a break from work for a little while to care for a child or an adoption of a child. Um, the worst days are unimaginable. So we have people that are calling uh, because they're dealing with the impact of a critical illness. We have people who are dealing with things like post-traumatic stress disorder. And we have people who are dealing with the unexpected loss of a loved one. We help employers cover their employees, which means most of the deaths we see at the Hartford are untimely deaths, people who were still working and most likely under the age of 65. And so when these things occur, uh, people become emotionally, physically, and unfortunately, in a lot of cases, financially drained. Um, and our claims organization inspires me every day because they see people at their most vulnerable. And people will share things with our claims analysts who in all, in all extensive purposes are, are strangers that maybe they can't share with anybody else, whether they're scared or they're hungry or they're in financial trouble. And that's where the intersection of what we do and the mis mission of Alice really came together. So if you go to the next slide. Now, admittedly, a year ago when we started this project, uh, we didn't understand the acronym of Alice, but we certainly understood her struggles. Um, and our business case began with partnering with our data and analytics team. So we knew through the Alice research that Alice households tend to make $40,000 a year or less. The uh, combined national average in the United States is $62,000. So where were our 20 million group benefits customers in terms of their income? And were they Alice populations was the question we needed help answering. And our data and analytics team did an amazing job putting this data together. So what you see here is across those 20 million customers, the, the picture looks very different on the East and the West Coast where the median income skews higher, uh, closer to $82,000. Obviously the cost of living is higher too. But when we looked across the country, if you see the red, you see how many of our customers um, are making about $40,000 a year. Now we have no way of knowing what their spouse or partner makes and how that contributes to their financial equation. But we did know that in the event of an unplanned illness or premature death, uh, we could have customers that are in financially fragile situations. Next slide. So before the, the crisis of COVID, we were looking at how many employees were living paycheck to paycheck and staggering statistic of 78% are living paycheck to paycheck. And that's not just Alice. We see that nearly one in 10 workers that are making $100,000 or more are also living paycheck to paycheck. When Paula showed us the trends in Connecticut, we were very surprised to learn how many Alice households we had in affluent communities in Fairfield County and, and around Hartford here in Glastonbury and Avon and Simsbury. It was very eye-opening to us. And we know from the work we do in group benefits that 66% of bankruptcies that happen begin with a medical illness. And when I'm talking about a medical um, situation, I'm talking about cancer, heart disease, stroke. Those are the types of, of issues that we see in the disability space and, and ultimately in some of the premature deaths that we see. So taking it back to, to what we do on behalf of employers for their employees, if you think about the typical life insurance benefit is one time someone's salary. So if you're making $40,000 a year uh, and there's an unplanned death that, that gets paid to the beneficiary or those families, 
but many of the families that we see have to pay out medical bills and the cost of the average funeral is between eight and ten thousand dollars so that that forty thousand dollar benefit is going to erode very quickly and in the disability space with a covered disability we typically see employers covering between 50 to 60 percent of someone's paycheck um, but again, if you're living paycheck to paycheck and now that check is 40% or 50% of what it was, that impact is immediate. And what happens to Alice households in those first 30 to 60 days can be critical and, and even in situations where it could prevent homelessness. Um, so as these connections were coming available, we were also doing research at the Hartford to understand the landscape of the multi-generational workforce. And what we were seeing across the country is employees believe their employers need to provide these benefits or are required to provide these benefits to them. They see them as table stakes benefits, but in fact, they're not. Um, employers have a choice whether or not they're going to provide them. And thankfully, especially as we see now, um, many employers offer this important benefit to working Americans. Next slide. So the next piece that we learned from our, our visits with the Alice researchers is the industries to watch. And what they taught us was the, the critical industries where you see a high amount of Alice population is seen in healthcare, hospitality, and retail. And when we looked at our group business, which is about five and a half billion dollars, uh, we were very heavily, um, we serve many employers in those key industries, which means we have a lot of Alice workers. And those workers are critical as we've seen both to the economy, but also society as a whole, especially now uh, within the pandemic. And so to the extent that we could protect them even further, that was incredibly important to our mission and certainly to our employer's mission. So in terms of building a business case, I just wanna go back to that partnership we had with our data and analytics team. So you know, no one is looking for, for unplanned work. Um, I don't care if you're in a big company or a small one. And if we had gone to that data and analytics team and we were all very passionate and we said, drop everything and help us put this data together, the answer probably would have been no. So one of the key learnings was to be patient. What we said was, as we started to share our, our ideas, is could you find some time here and there, pockets of time across the team where you could start to compile this? And then Thankfully, Brian, who runs that division, Brian Mangine, um, was agreeable to that. And it took about two months to pull all the data together. There was a lot of math that went into that that we can't share um, because it's proprietary. But really, that was critical to the business case, and we wouldn't have been able to advance without it. So being patient, being mindful of resources is really critical. Next slide. So now we knew more about our customer. We knew more about Alice. So how could we put, put a plan in place? Um, so we went to do a go and see, um, and that's not just marketing. We had incredible partnership with our claims organization who joined us to learn more about 211, and also Diane Cantello, who runs the enterprise philanthropic platform at the Hartford. Some members of her team joined us for a field trip to Rocky Hill, where we spent time in the call center, and we quickly realized the synergies. The issues that people were calling and getting help on with 211 were the same issues we were hearing in the call center. And what we realized is that we could be stronger together. Next slide. So what did we do? Um, we officially joined the National Council for Alice, uh, along with many other amazing companies that we've gotten to know. Uh, and, and through the research that we help fund, um, we learn more and those learnings make our products better and it makes us think differently than maybe we would have in the past. It becomes even more ingrained in the Hartford culture. And then we're able to take those learnings and we're able to share with our employers so we can really make an impact. But we really, above and beyond, the first steps we needed to make was how could we help our customers when they need it most, those claimants. So we did three things. We trained our call centers across life and disability so that they can understand the breadth of what 211 can do. Um, I think all of us saw those slips that come in our utility bills that promote 211 and those types of services, but we learned a lot more about what they do. And in a moment, I'm gonna show you some of those real life examples of the connections that we're making. The other, the other core connection we had was through our online experience. 
So this is the, the website that we have where claimants go to upload their medical documents and to find out about their payments. So again, that real-time connection to get them the help they need when they need it. And we get over a million people to that site every year. And then last but not least is the beneficiary packages that go out. We've incorporated 211 messaging into all of those packages as well. Next slide. So how would we measure success? That's gonna be a key to your business case. Your leaders are gonna to wanna to know how will we know if we're making an impact. And the Hartford has an amazing um, commitment to artificial intelligence within our claims uh, centers and being able to use a technology called text mining. Because as you can imagine with all of the calls that come through there, how can you aggregate that data and how can you understand the trends? So about 45 days ago, um, we were able to start leveraging that existing technology to track our 211 referrals and how we were helping people in real time. And these are some real life scenarios. And what we found is that 211 can help our customers if they need things like transportation. They need to be able to get to their medical appointments and if they can't, then that directly impacts their ability to get better and hopefully get back to work. Uh, we also see that they need support groups. They need things like counseling, whether that be for their emotional well-being as well as their financial well-being through things like credit counseling or even, even legal assistance. Uh, the caregiving aspect of 211 is incredible. Uh, you know, I spent some time in Florida when we did the training uh, with our behavioral health experts and vocational health experts, and they were seeing a lot of connections in terms of how the caregiving support could help, whether it's for an aging parent or a child with special needs. And then, of course, there's the fundamentals. So, you know, how can we pay the bills? How can we help people with heat and things like food? So we are seeing that it's making a difference, and especially now as we've heard um, the, the dramatic increase in claims call or in, um, 211 calls post-pandemic or as we're getting deeper into the pandemic. Next slide. So now let's switch over to the interactive discussion. I, I want to hear from you, and, and I want to help, and I want us to be able to help each other. Um, if you go to the next slide. I, I thought I would just share to kick us off the words of my first boss and mentor who could, it, these words continue to inspire me to this day. He said, pay attention and you'll find the ideas are everywhere. So there's a lot of smart people in the world, um, but how do we get those ideas out into our heads and, and out into the marketplace? And I think sometimes there's just that knowledge gap in terms of how to advance an idea and, and get traction and that erodes our confidence. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, I did ask my team, what do you think are the, the biggest barriers to getting your ideas uh, out and, and really in front of senior leadership? And, and these were the three biggest that came through, you know, just fear and confidence, not knowing where to start, that lack of executive sponsorship. Um, and so that's where I, I really want us to be able to use the chat feature and let's talk about what are some of the things that get in your way of sharing. So Jesse, I think. Absolutely. Open so, up the chat. Uh, chat is open and Cora, thank you so much for that. So if anyone wants to uh, ask the question, please enter it in the chat box or feel free to raise your hand and I will unmute you. And to get it going, uh, Cora, let, let, me, let me ask you this question. How did you find yourself in this space and how did you leverage, I guess, your personal background to become a vocal leader within Alice? Well, I, yeah, I've worked specifically in the, the life and disability insurance space now for um, more than half my career. And at two other companies that I worked for, I was responsible to go and do customer stories. And I think through that experience of traveling around the country and sitting across the kitchen table from people that have either been impacted by loss or have been impacted by a disability, um, what you hear are two important themes that stay with me and really make me personally committed to what we do. Uh, the first is no one ever thinks they're gonna need our products when they get them because people um, don't wanna think about bad things happening, neither do I. Um, so you can't blame them. But I think the other part you always hear is people have underestimated 
time and the impact of grief um, in the case of loss and what time can mean um, to their families. And, and that's what the products do is give people a little more time to figure out what to do next. And then in the case of a disability, particularly a, a critical illness, um, the impact of, of time on their finances and how long a critical illness can last and what that means to the individual and what that means to their families. And so I think seeing is believing. So when you see all of those situations, it makes you incredibly passionate about what you do and really committed to, to making an impact day in and day out. Thank you, Cora, because I get, I get that. So I'm still waiting for a question from the group. We have, we've had over 25 people uh, be part of this. Oh, we, we have a question. And actually, I th if you can see it, it it's, it's in the chat box. It's, do you have any sense of any of the Hartford employees using 211 to help your internal employees? So we have done a really good job, I think, um, through our intranet site and, and through things like town halls and with our senior leaders being able to promote the, the partnership that we have in talking about 211. And I think particularly now, um, the commitment that the Hartford has to talking about health by providing health and wellness and, and financial resources during the pandemic, um, we consistently talk about 211 in a way that we didn't a year ago, because I just think we didn't know enough about it to, to really be um, proactively promoting it to our employees. But um, whether, you know, exact measurements, not at this point, uh, but I think that it, it has been a big part of our culture and, and certainly uh, bringing the awareness internally as well as externally. Thank you, Cora. So we actually have time for one more question. If there's a hand raiser out there and you just want to say it instead of type it, raise your hand so I can pick on you and, I, and I'll be happy to unmute you. Here's one. What was the most challenging and most rewarding about this project? So for me personally, um, going in January, I went down to Florida um, where specifically the, the call center focuses on uh, long-term uh, long disability as well as short-term disabilities. And I was able to participate. We brought in 211 um, from the national level to train the folks in that office. I spent time listening to calls and I was amazed at how many phone calls um, needed the 211 referral, but then just listening to our claims organization, raise their hands, ask questions, um, talk about real life scenarios with the 211 leadership, and know that we were going to be able to help people uh, was just incredibly rewarding. One of, the, one of the best days from a career perspective. Fantastic. Cora, on behalf of the United Way, on behalf of all the people that are listening to us right now, let me, say, let me say thank you, because our community, our society needs leadership like yours. And thank you for being a voice and an advocate to promote the work of Alice and to be that internal champion that all of our workplaces need and deserve so that we can continue mo moving the mission forward. So we value you tremendously. Thank you. Thank you. Feelings mutual. Thank, for the, thank you for the opportunity. So everyone, uh, the, the pop is about to begin in five minutes. I'm gonna put the link in the chat box so that you can all click on it. If you're not, uh, if you can't see the, the chat box, go to pop-2020.com and we're about to begin in five minutes. So Cora, once again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your insight. We value you. All of our guests who, who uh, were part of this influence session, thank you for making the time. And, and, and again, on behalf of the United Way, we appreciate what every, everyone here does. See you in five Thank you. minutes. Thank you. Bye.